Got a bit of cannabis in there. Is it a bit of, bit of weed there, is it? OK, have a good meal on the plane. Getting really high traces off the case, higher than I've had off anything else, you know what I mean? Excuse me, I've told you you can't hey, use your phone. Excuse me. In Manchester, officers are dealing with a difficult customer. You might want to just go and stand with Liz. Martin's in there as well, okay. just the bloke to stop us a bit. Ah, see. Okay, I don't know whether yeah. there's anyone else in there, that's all. The passenger has returned from the Caribbean. I've still got the keys outside. Okay. It's a known source of cocaine. Yeah, but why can't I tell him to come inside? But he isn't making things easy for Liz. Why did she go out before you? Because I was getting... I'm not asking you, I'm not answering your questions. Do you search? If you find anything, lock me up. We don't find out, you dickhead. The man can't believe he's a suspect, but he also can't seem to read the signs. You're not going to believe Hello. this. Excuse me, I've told you you can't use your phone. Excuse me, excuse me, I've told you you can't use your phone. Excuse me. She can't come inside. Liz had a number of reasons for stopping the passenger, but now it's his behaviour that's causing the most concern. You're going to pack them back up, yeah? I am going to pack Pack them back up properly, yeah? I will pack them back. With the man getting more aggressive, the other officers keep an eye on the situation. And could you on TV, you think you're a professional? This is stupid. You're going to watch this thing all the time. What do you call it? Australian boy. The man seems confused about what country he's in. Meanwhile, Liz attempts to continue her search. Hey, you get your dog? The dog doesn't find everything. I'm not, not just looking for drugs. Looking for anything else you shouldn't have. Like what? Like weapons, oh, excess bullshit. cigarettes. Shut up. OK, what I'm doing now, we've got a machine that tests for traces of drugs. Have you ever used up any contact with drugs? I said, no, you've asked me the question already. I don't take drugs. Right, OK, that's fine then. Do your little swabs, whatever you want to do. The man then accuses the officers of racism. You always say it's random, it's bullshit. Like the guy said on TV, you're all racist. That's what it is. Stupid, stupid it is racist. I didn't see one white person get stopped. No, no, but it has to be me in it. So we're better in it. We've stopped other people on this flight already today. No, whatever. Can believe me or not? Don't believe anyway. No. But it turns out the passenger has a reason for being annoyed at the delay. This is taking the. P why today? Do you know what day is today? My birthday. That's why I'm really fed off. I'm just gonna go home. Enjoy my 21st, just like every other, every other 21 year old on the birthday, but to get stopped by custom on your birthday. Any other day, would it be a lot of bothered? Okay. With the search over, the man decides to push his luck. You don't find what you're looking for, since you can't reimburse me for my taxi costs. I'd like an apology, a verbal apology. Is that, is that okay? Is that much too much to ask? Uh, I'm sorry about if I'm wasting your time. That's fine. Obviously, it's not a good day for my birthday, what a shame, but you haven't found anything, so that's it, really. You just, it's annoying when you get picked out, but it's funny, it's funny. Finally, Liz and the man seem to agree on something. No. I am not doing five, ten years. It's just not worth it. I'd rather just work like everybody else. Some people yeah. do, unfortunately. But... In Manchester, a flight has just landed from Jamaica. Sniffer dog Roddy is in operation on the hunt for any traces of cocaine. Roddy gives a clear indication on this passenger, and officers Liz and Kev step in to investigate. You got a passport and ticket? Do you have a passport and ticket? Yeah. You're travelling together, yeah? yeah, yeah. You want to come over here? I'll have a quick chat with you then. With over a thousand cocaine seizures a year, border officers know that cocaine smugglers come in all shapes and sizes. How long have you been away for? A week. Have you been before? No. No? What do you think of it? It's nice. Is this the same bag you took out with you? Yep. OK. The officers take the passports and swab for signs of drug use. <laughs> I've just got traces of, quite high traces of cocaine off a gentleman's passport, so I'll ask him if he's had any contact with drugs if he's used at all, and take it from there. Mm. Just want to put some of your passport, see if there's any traces of drugs on it, and yeah. there is traces of drugs. Have you ever used anything? 
No. Ever smoked weed or ever used anything stronger than that? Smoke, no. No. Never had any sort of contact with drugs ever. Well, not no, not that, no, no. Right. Okay. The man clearly states he's had no contact with drugs, but officers know from experience not to believe everything they're told. Yeah, uh, just found a very small trace of cocaine. I've been um, swabbing around in his jeans pockets and things like that. So it's only a small one, but it's still a trace. Liz's job now is to work out if he's a user or a smuggler. Are you sure you've never ever used or been in contact with, with cocaine? Nope. Okay. I mean, if you have, tell me now, because it's a lot easier. No. Okay. It's found a very small trace. You see, I've been swabbing your clothes and everything. Yeah. Yeah, and it's come from your clothes, so. With a bit more pressure, Kev's suspect begins to contradict himself. Have you ever used drugs any time, even if it was a long time ago? Yeah, I've used it before, yeah. What, what have you used and how long ago? Well, I don't want to discuss that because it's personal, you know what I mean? Well, it's relevant to... Well, it's not relevant because I ain't got no drugs on me, so I don't well, answer that question. I don't know that. All that I can go off is well, the, the traces no drugs. that I'm getting. Liz then swabs her passenger's suitcase, and the hit for cocaine is almost off the scale. The officers are now convinced the two suspects are carrying drugs. That is out the bottom of your suitcase. Well, it's like that. I mean, that's, that's about as high as it goes. Yeah. Yeah? So you're telling me you've never, ever been in contact no. with cocaine? Well, I've seen it. I've never had a lie, I've never like that in my life. No? No. I've done inside your bag. I've got, well, I'll show you. Cocaine high. It's a really, really high reading for cocaine for inside your bag. Yeah. Now, if you use it every now and then, I'm not bothered. I just need to know. I, I didn't use it, that's what I'm trying to say to right. But the officers need answers, or the search will need to go deeper. At the end of the day, I need to know where the traces are coming from. If, if it's definitely not from you using, yeah. I've got to think you might have something concealed on you or in you, you somewhere. Search me as much as you want, mate. I ain't got, um, that's what I'm I told you. you search, do whatever searches you want to do. All right. Wide. OK. I didn't, if it had something to add, I wouldn't have said that I'd made that with, with, with him and I walked straight off and said yeah, no. Yeah, fair enough, it's fair Not comment, me. yeah. All right. But some background checks reveal that Kev's passenger has a criminal record for dealing heroin. Stuff on CRO, supply heroin in 03. There is theft, kindred drugs going back five to six years. The officers now have proof that at least one of them is lying. It's not something we're going to use. We're not going to go and tell the police this person's admitted doing know. this, that, or the other. I just need to know why there's traces there. That, that's the only reason I keep asking you. I know you're probably getting fed up with me now. I keep asking you the same questions, yeah, yeah. but I just need to know why there's traces there. Yeah. That's cool. That's my job. I've got to. Yeah. If I let you walk out of here with all these traces of coke and no explanation, my boss is going to say to me, "Well, you know, why have you done that?" So that's the only reason I keep asking you. Kev's suspect has all admitted right. previous convictions for heroin dealing, but both suspects are adamant they've had no recent contact with cocaine. I'm getting really high traces off the case, higher than I've had off anything else, you know what I mean? I don't know why, um, you know, like off the bottom, that's, that's like from underneath the lining. But I've x-rayed it, there's nothing. My guys have been done for dealing class A, aren't they, in the past? Yeah. They probably looked used, they might have been out there organising something. Liz re-x-rays her passenger suitcase for any hidden concealments. How long have you had it, mate? Yeah. Just getting really, really massive hits. That's where I've had the biggest hits for cocaine, and uh, there's nothing there. It doesn't weigh anything, so. I've just swapped these debit cards, and it's completely off scale, absolutely right to the top. The officers are getting frustrated with the evasive answers. When was the last time you used coke? Months ago, I can't remember. Right. Months. Okay. Kev's passenger has admitted using cocaine, but it's Liz's suspect who still says he's never touched drugs, despite all the evidence against him. Yeah, because the dog uh, indicated on you. That, that, I mean, that's the reason we stopped you. Um, Want to be sure you've got nothing on you. Uh, we found traces of cocaine all over your baggage. Um, you've denied use or contact with cocaine. You travel frequently. Um, the trip was booked by somebody else. It's just one of our indicators. So the lads are just going to take you into a private room now and search you. All right. Yeah, yeah. Running out of possible causes, Liz examines his footwear. If he's a swallower, traces of drugs would seep into the shoe. But hits off the laces would suggest he's recently handled drugs while using. And that's off his laces. You seen that off the laces? 
So you've got a problem because I've really, really massive traces off your laces. There's nothing off, there's like a little trace sort of like inside your shoes. Yeah. But off your laces, it's just like, it's almost all the bars again. It's like, there's been loads of cocaine yeah, in your contact. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, well, I mean, it, inside, but like yeah. I say, off your laces, I've never seen anything so high off laces. Um, obviously the concern is you might have something internally. Um, if you we were to... Scanner, if you want. Are you, you'd be alright with that, would you? Yeah, I'd not take that and I have brought up, but okay. do you make a bit stupid this thing to bring somewhere? For well, people from? do, yeah. I don't know, but... So what, um, what yeah, about a yeah. urine test? If we did a urine test, what would that show us? What, my intestines? A urine test, you know, like a, a, a pee test. Oh, my pee test? Yeah. A bit of cannabis? A bit of cannabis, but... cannabis, yeah. Yeah, it does show cannabis, yeah, yeah. but no cocaine. No. A baffled Liz has investigated the massive cocaine hits as far as she can. With no hard evidence, the men are free to go. All right. Go home and burn all your stuff. And... <laughs> yeah, we've just been totally searched, and the same got traces of cocaine in my, in my laces in my shoes. But I don't have a clue where that could have come from. Cheers. It's happened about five times before, so it's nothing new. But to find traces of cocaine in our shoelaces, that's a new one. But I don't know where the hell it could have come from. At Manchester, border officers in the immigration area have asked Officer Liz to search a man hoping to enter bags? the UK on a tourist visa, as they have concerns oh, over how long he plans plane. to stay. Okay. This gentleman's coming into the country to meet someone he's met on the internet. It's um, a girlfriend and he's coming into the UK to see her for the first time. And how long is it you're here for? Uh, six months. Six months. And uh, why have you come to the UK? Um, to eventually try to get married to my girlfriend. I proposed her over online. All right. And she accepts it? Mm -hmm. Oh, excellent. The reason that we're going to search for his bags now is because the immigration officers have questioned him upstairs when they took his passport off him when he entered the UK. Um, because of what he said, his reason for staying here, that's why they want us to search his bags to see if there's any documents in there that's going to indicate he's going to stay in the UK for longer than what he's, he's intimating. And when did you meet your girlfriend? Uh, back in October. October 1908? Yeah. yeah. The man is being unusually candid, but his story has all the hallmarks of an immigration scam. All right, so you met her in October 08. Where was that? Uh, on an online game. Oh, in an online game? Yeah. Oh, right, what game was that? Uh, Second Life. Second Life? Yeah. What was that all about? What's, what, what kind of game is that? Is it like it's a... It's a, a role-playing game. All oh, right. Just a bunch of pictures. OK. Right, so you've proposed to someone you've never even met. The man's honesty yeah. is starting to get yeah. him into trouble. So when you get married, um, when, when do you plan to get married? Well, we're going to try to give it about a month or two, and then we're going to, if we're still madly in love with each other, we're going All to go right. and do it. OK. And then we're going to apply for the marriage visa. Right, and where will he live? Will he live here or in the States? Uh, I'll live with her. Here. But this is right. against immigration yeah. rules, and unless he begins to explain himself, the romance may have to remain online. That's a pair of panties she sent me. All right, it's OK. All right, this is the movie collection. Yeah. It seems the custom search is starting to go a bit deeper than the man would like. What's up? <laughs> oh, right, oh, this is your eyes. This is your private collection, is it? That's yeah, OK. Yeah, dad tried stealing from me. You've got a bit of cannabis in there. It's a bit of, bit of weed there, is it? Liz discovers what could be cannabis. Um, not where it came from. And suddenly yeah, the I mean, man becomes sort of sort of evasive. Yeah. Is that what it is? I'm not really sure. You're not sure? OK. Are you just standing on there for a minute? The man's bid to meet his fiancée looks on increasingly shaky ground. This guy's just come over from America. Um, he's come to see his internet girlfriend who he's never met before. Uh, it sounds like he's intending to stay, so it sounds more like an immigration issue than from our point of view. Uh, I've just been looking. He's, he's got some adult DVDs, but I've just found a little 
tiny, tiny, just a little residue, potentially of cannabis, herbal cannabis. So I'm just going to give it a quick test and just see if it is or not. Yeah, so I've got a positive reaction. It's a it's very, very small amount. I mean, obviously, he's been very upfront, upfront about what his intentions are, uh, which could be unfortunate for him, uh, depending on what immigration decide. But from what he's been saying to me, it does sound like he does intend to, um, you know, come over here to get married and to, you know, stay here with his with his with his wife when he gets married. Liz thinks the cannabis is probably just a sign of personal use, and so decides to hand him back to immigration. Yeah, it's, it's, it's reacted positively to cannabis. Um, I mean, have you got any drugs on you at all today? No, ma'am. No. OK, okay what will happen now is uh, we'll take you back upstairs. Um, I'll just show the immigration officer the paperwork that I found. OK, and um, then it'll be up to them then. They might want to ask you a few more questions. Okay. Basically, he's applied for a visit visa, uh, which means he's come here for the purpose of tourism. When he's actually got to the immigration desk, he told the immigration officer that he's come to meet his girlfriend. So it sounds really like he's come, he doesn't intend to go back at all. So I've passed that information on to the immigration officer. They'll interview him and they'll make a decision about whether or not to let him come into the UK or whether to send him back home to America. The man was allowed into the UK to meet his fiancée for the first time, but their relationship has been put on hold as he was returned to the United States the next day. We've just been called over to Terminal 3. Um, there's a lady, I believe, travelling from Barbados. Um, is it via Gatwick, Gary? Or Heathrow? It's on one of the shuttles. Uh, we believe they found cocaine in yams. The initial trace was off the scale. Like, so we're just going to cut right into these. We've had it in mangoes, coconuts, pineapples. Looks like there's nothing in these though, unfortunately. Investigating further, the officers discover more potentially incriminating details. The woman's passport is brand new and her ticket was paid for in cash. Is someone meeting her? Her mum says she's... she's yeah. Mom's meeting. I mean, if you, if you want to put stab vests on, yeah, and go and have a word and just verify a story, there's no harm there. Still suspicious, the officers decide to investigate the woman's claim she's being met by her mother. Obviously, for our protection, we need to have body armour on in case, if it is a drugs job, the people who are meeting will obviously be looking for those drugs and be rather upset. So we need to be armoured up. Just going to take your shoes for a second. That's yours as well. Officers continue to carry out further tests for drugs. Go ahead. When someone's got an internal concealment for drugs, their sweat um, comes out onto the shoes and the drugs shows in the sweat. So it's an indication that they might have something. They could have taken something, but it gives us grounds to to do um, an internal body scan or something like that. It's come back negative, so there's no trace on the shoes. The woman's ordeal continues smell. Smell. as the team carry out more drug tests on the baggage. But she's not really got many clothes or anything for a month's stay. It's that bag as well, that's a bag constellation that uh, a while ago made a lot of seizures in. A radio three, message three, comes three, through two, from the yeah, officers sent to. to meet the woman's mother. No, there's no one out there waiting for her. Yes, yes. It's very strange, though, that her mum's not waiting for her outside. If, uh, but, you know, that in itself is not enough, is it? So she might have been delayed. With no sign of the mother, the woman remains under arrest yeah. until the officers can prove that she's telling the truth. I don't really think I've got enough to, no, to do it any further. I don't think you've got enough to go any further, to be honest with you. But obviously, the reason you arrest her in the first place is because you, you thought you had drugs in the yams. Now, if you haven't, um, to an arrest. Well, yeah. But wait for Gary to come back in and see what Gary says, because obviously he's uh, he's in charge. But I would say you haven't really got enough. No. Officer Gary radios through to say he's finally met the woman's mother outside. All right. Okay. Having found right, no try. further evidence of cocaine, officers accept their false readings must have come from using a contaminated right. knife. We've, we've looked in your bags, we've looked further, 
Um, and in further investigation, looking into the yams and stuff, there isn't anything in there. We've made a mistake. When we tested it, it's given a false reading on our machine, so there isn't anything in there. So you're no longer under arrest. And I want to apologise for keeping you, but thank you for your patience anyway, and you can relax now, OK? So we're going to repack all your bags, and then we'll get, let you go outside, all right? OK, and hopefully you'll enjoy your holiday here. Whilst it's been an unnecessary ordeal for the woman, it shows that Class A drug hits must be investigated properly to ensure only guilty smugglers end up behind bars. This way, that's the, the way out. Okay, just keep going through. Thank you. As passengers disembark, Officer Liz is on the lookout for any suspected smugglers. Hello, sir. You travelling on your own today? Yes. Can you just bring your bag this way for me, please? Where have you come in from? Jamaica. Yeah, can you just bring your bag this way, please? Are you aware it's illegal to import certain things into the UK, such as controlled drugs, indecent material, yes. offensive weapons? Yes. Do you have anything like that with you? No. Do you have anything to smoke or drink? No. Right, OK, what's in your duty-free boxes there? Rum. OK, so that's the drink. So how much rum have you got? There's uh, six bottles. Six bottles of rum. OK. Do you have a key for this, please? He's way over his allowance for, for spirits, and Liz is suspicious about the man's denial. She decides to x-ray some of the goods in his baggage for any hidden drugs. The gentleman's just got some fruit and some bottles. Uh, what I'm doing, I'm just x-raying it just to make sure that um, there's nothing concealed within the fruit or the bottles. Sometimes I've had little packages that are stuck behind the labels and the bottles. So I'm just checking there's nothing concealed there. They all look fine, so. He's got quite a lot of bottles of rum cream. I'm actually going to test one of the bottles just to make sure there's no cocaine in solution. What's just happened here is I've just been swabbing various things uh, as I've been going through the baggage. I've just tested the swab, and it's actually come up with a small trace of heroin. OK, now that's... Quite unexpected, really, because um, the sort of drugs you'd be expecting to find from Jamaica uh, would be cocaine and cannabis. So it's only a small trace, and I'm just going to see if I can replicate the hit to see where it's come from, and then I might ask him about it. Having found the trace, Liz is now on the lookout for any behavioural indicators the man may be smuggling. <laughs> OK, have a good meal on the plane? Yeah, the meal was terrible. The meal was terrible? Yeah. What was it? Uh, what did I have? Um, some, some powdered eggs. Some, some powdered eggs? Is that it? All right. But it's not just the man's manners causing Liz concern. You sounded like you just had a three-course roast dinner. Yeah. One of the indications that someone might have an internal consumer of drugs is actually burping. Um, and as you, I don't know whether he caught that, but he just gave a very loud burp and he's not eating very much, so, you know, my suspicions are raised a little bit. He's also not got a lot of money. He's got £5 to get a taxi to somewhere, which he might get there for £5, but I'll just carry on, see what we get. The last thing to check is the passenger's rum. Can you pass me your, your juicy free boxes up, please? Cheers, to OK, this isn't rum, is it? This isn't rum, is it? What is it? OK, just wait there for one second. Liz's intuition and patience has finally paid off as she finds a large package stuffed inside the duty-free rum cases. OK. Obviously, what I was expecting to find in the duty-free boxes was rum. OK. This clearly isn't rum, uh, so obviously I suspect it to be drugs. What I'm going to do now, cut into there. OK, and what we've got here is herbal cannabis by the look of it. I'm actually going to arrest the gentleman. I'm going to ask my colleague to test it, and I'm going to just take him into a private room and arrest him. Just want to take a seat there, please. OK, okay I suspect this to be... Cannabis, okay. So the time is uh, 0833. 
I'm arresting you on suspicion of being knowingly concerned in the illegal importation of a controlled drug. As the man begins to realise the consequences of his actions, Liz gets the results back from the tests on the substance. All that red colour there, that's confirmation that it's cannabis. Obviously, the, the, the indicators there that he's nervous and all the rest of it um, are still there. We now know why he's nervous, because he's got this. But I can't discount the possibility that he may be carrying drugs internally as well. But the man is less than happy at the suggestion that he may have swallowed drugs. I need to be sure that you don't have drugs on you, you know, inside you. Are you OK with that? No, because I have nothing in my stomach. No, because you've got nothing in your stomach, right. If you refuse to have um, the compass, you will be monitored and we'll have to wait for nature to take its course and you'll have to have two clear motions. With the man's reluctance to have an X-ray, Liz is adamant they'll find out whether he swallowed drugs one way or the other. OK, we're going to take you upstairs now to our custody suite, OK? So uh, if you'd like to follow us, you can push your trolley. OK, you all right? The man's frustration is understandable. Liz has intercepted a huge amount of cannabis. It was actually quite a shock when I saw um, when I saw the, the tape packages. Um, I wasn't expecting it. I just thought he'd actually got too much rum. The packages contain more than eight kilos of cannabis, with a street value of more than twenty-five thousand pounds. After an X-ray, it was revealed that the cannabis smuggler had not swallowed any packages. He's currently awaiting trial.